Shall we stand together? It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And everyone said amen. Amen. We thank you so much for being here. Let's, let's lift our hands and let's welcome the presence of God into this place, shall we? Heavenly Father, we love you and we're so thankful for this day. We're thankful for all your blessings, God. We're asking that you would touch us today. Have your way in this service, God. Let your spirit fall and minister in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands, clap our hands, and worship him, worship him today. Clap your hands unto the Lord and give him praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for being in service with us. God bless you. You may be seated. We thank you so much for being here, for engaging in our worship. Thank you to all of you that are joining us by ways of webcast. We thank you so much for logging in and worshiping the Lord with us. We pray that the spirit of the Lord may fall wherever you may be this morning. And when everyone said amen. We're going to ask our ushers to prepare to receive our Sunday morning tithes and offerings. It's indeed a pleasure to give unto the Lord. For God loveth a cheerful giver is what the scripture says. And it is always a joy and a pleasure to give back unto the Lord what he has blessed us with. And everyone said amen. 
Amen. There are multiple ways in which you can give. If, of course, if you're here and you can give in person or you can give online at ConyersFaith.org. You can text the word GIVE to 855-934-2059 and you can follow the prompt that's there listed there. And, or you can mail it in to the address listed upon your screen. Pastor and Bishop have said it so often, but it still remains true. We thank you so much for your faithfulness and your consistency to give to the work of the Lord. I'm telling you, we are a blessed church because you are a giving church. I believe that wholeheartedly. And we thank you so much for your faithfulness and consistency to give unto the work of the Lord. And everyone said amen. Amen. Let's pray for this offering, shall we? Lord, we love you and we're so thankful for this day. And we're thankful for the opportunity to give back into your kingdom work. We're asking that you would bless us this morning. We ask that you would bless this offering. Bless the gift and the giver. Bless those that have and bless those that have not. Lord, we ask that you would bless them for their desire to give. And will not fail to give you honor and glory for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you as you come and worship in your giving. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord today. I am honored to introduce our speaker for this morning. I did not get the pleasure of being taught by him in Sunday school, but many people that I love and respect have said how much they appreciate and love Brother Mike Sweet for his teachings and his spirit. And I can tell you one thing, he is as true in the church as he is outside of the church. And I thank Brother Mike for his spirit. Brother Sweet, would you please come and give us what the Lord has given to you? And we ask that God would bless you. God bless you, sir. Well, I went old school and I went new school, Brother Patterson. I, <laughs> I brought my iPad this time, but I also brought my notes. I know the one time Brother Patterson was coming in on Wednesday night and he bumped into somebody and his iPad went south and he was just, of course, he, he's got enough in his mind. He could teach us for the next 100 years and never have to have an iPad or a Bible. But listen, I want to tell Bishop and Brother Michael that's not here today that I love them and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I try not to get emotional. I did real well last time. I didn't do it. I said, oh, Lord, I help me, Jesus. But, you know, I, I say I guess you can be strong in your manhood when you're not afraid to cry, right? Uh, right, Brother Jerry? Uh, listen, something that was crazy when I was, I said, Lord, just give me some affirmation. Brother Pastor, you know when you start thinking about that, you start thinking about a message or Brother Sean or whomever. Man, the things go through your mind. You have things from Sunday school from years and years, and I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back to the, the same thing I, I taught in the past. Help me with something new. The Bible, of course, is not new. It's been around a few hundred years. And uh, but I said, Lord, give me some affirmation when you all sing that song. He's our provider. If we trust in Him, and we pray, and we thank Him, Brother Ashley. Every day, for a right mind, a job to go to, maybe something that you're not happy with at the moment, but God has big things for you. God will reward you openly for the things you do faithfully every day. You know, there's been times, man, I've been, Barbara and I went through some major financial issues years ago. We all go through those, right? Nothing new. I'm not, I'm not bringing anything new to you today. And, uh, man, if it hadn't been for Avacare checks, 
coming in back in the day, we wouldn't have had groceries. I was working a full-time job, but the bills just kept coming in, and the bills kept getting bigger. Go to the gas pumps today, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The bills just kept getting bigger. You know, you have your budget. You have it set. All of a sudden, now you spend an extra $150 for breaks, another $100 for formula, or another doctor's appointment you have to go to, or whatever it may be. And you realize real quick, that budget can be thrown out. And I said, Lord, thank you for having care. You know, it was time. So let me, let, me, let me pray real quick, and then we'll get into some scriptures. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. Thank you for letting us be here today. Lord, it's such a privilege to stand here. Lord, I'm not worthy. But I thank you, Lord, for each and every heart, each and every eye, and each and every mind. It's a tentative day, Lord. I ask you to bless each and every heart, each and every mind, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Um, numbers, I don't know if you read it or not, but the, the story of the Israelites were really just ungrateful children. You know, I was, I was telling brother, <laughs> I was telling brother, I was supposed to give him scripture back then. I said, just put the whole chapter 13 up there. And he looked at me kind of funny. I said, they're not long scriptures, but put it up there for me. So um, we all know the story about Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, Egypt's bondage, right? Barbara and I were talking about this a few days ago, and you had a well over a million people that had grown to a well over a million people over hundreds of years in bondage. Some of those had, come, had become complacent where they were. They were happy where they were. They were like, you know, okay, we'll just stay here and we'll live here. We have a place to live and food to eat and we're okay. But there was somebody, somebody that wasn't happy that reached out to the throne of God and said, God, listen, something's not right here. This is not our home. We're not supposed to be here. Now, you have to understand generations had died. We're talking about, what, about 400 years, 350, 400 years. So unless, and they didn't live that long back then. They didn't live as long as they did in way back. So the people weren't living 400 years. So the thing about this is they were, someone in the background, whether it was an elder or whether it was a young person, said, God, I'm, this is not my home. We're not supposed to be here. We're supposed to be in the promised land, which is Israel, wherever. So here's what, they were reaching out to God. What I'm trying to say is, and most of us in here are not real, real, real young, but to some we are. I mean, you have some in here that are, let's see, who's the youngest in here today? I can't, I'm not going to call names. Okay, you got Bishop. Let's just use Bishop's age, okay? <laughs> and you have someone that's not as young. I'm say Brother D back there on the camera, probably one of the youngest ones in here. But you have someone 25 years old versus 75 years old. They can't fathom what it's like to live another 50 years. When you're telling them, oh, just give it 10 years, they're like, 10 years? That's a lifetime. And I'm thinking, the other day I was like, Barbara and I will be together 40 years in just a couple years. 40 years. And I'm like, where did that time go, Brother Jerry? What happened, Brother Patterson? I mean, you started this church, what, 40, 45? How many years ago? Well, okay, we're talking 40 years ago. And it went by like that. When you look back at the opportunities. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't rocky roads and trials and tests. But, you know what he kept doing and Mr. Patterson kept doing and this church kept doing? They kept praying. They kept letting God be their provider. Letting God. Now, let's go back to the, the scriptures. Let's, let's look at chapters 13, verse 1. It says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search us the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers. Shall ye send a man, every one, a ruler among them? Now, let me explain something to you. <laughs> These people weren't just the lay people. Now, I'm not... Here's the thing. I don't mind cleaning the trash or taking out the trash, cleaning the toilets. I've done all those things, and I'll continue to do those things. I don't care where I am in life. I'm never above anyone, period. And, if, and I've taught my children, it doesn't matter. If you're the president or CEO of Coca-Cola, or you are the person that's taking the trash out of Coca-Cola, you still have an obligation. We all are Christians. We all have, there's rungs of a ladder. Do you want to be the top of the rung? You want to be the bottom of the rung, Right? Now, let me get to the topic of my, my old message here. It says, you ready, Brother Ryan? Put that up first. Let's go back. I'm digressing. I'm getting ahead of myself. Lord, slow me down. All right. Are you a giant killer or a grasshopper? Okay. Now, here's what happens. We tend to let the little things. The other day I was in the house, and Barbara, my wife, loves rugs. And we had, there's a rug in front of the sink. There's a rug in front of the sink in the bathroom. There's a rug in front of the, the front of the stove. I'm talking about the little throw rugs, right? And I'm barefooted, right? So I was like, okay, I can walk through the house. I don't have shoes. I'll be okay. I was trying to go just to go to the ice machine, and, and I'd like to bust it in the kitchen. Thank God there were no cameras. No one was in there because I know I looked so comical. But it was, it's only raised up a quarter of an inch. It's not like the rug's three, six, six inches high. It's not a step. 
And I was like, I just laughed because I was thinking about this. I was like, how did I get tripped up on such a small thing? But this is what happened to the children of Israel. Now, you have to understand where they were. They had just been led out of Egypt all those years. They had been led through the desert. They had been led through the Red Sea. They had been led through all of these things, but they had been fed with manna from heaven. I mean, they didn't have to even work for it. They were just out there, and uh, they had water from a rock, right? Just, and, and so here they are going, but always me. Now, I guarantee you it wasn't all of them. Brother Patterson, it wasn't the whole congregation that was whining. It's the ones that say, my fingernail, i got a hangnail, Dr. Patterson. Can you help me? Lord, I got, I'm not saying that. But when I'm, somewhere along the way, they just kept murmuring and complaining. So here we are back to our story. Moses says, you know what? We're at this place right now. God didn't bring us this far to leave us this far. He brought us here, Brother Jerry, so that we could go on and help someone else. So here's what he says. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick 12 men, leaders, Brother Patterson, not lay people. That's where I'm going back to. Leaders. And I want you guys to go east, west, north, south. I want you to go all over, and I want you to survey the land. In 40 days, I'm going to have you come back here, and we're going to talk about this, and we're going to find out what, where we should go. Where's the promised land? Where's the land flowing with milk and honey? So these men go out. We all know the story. Most of us should. They all come back 40 days later. They're talking to Moses, and the first thing they say is, we brought back grapes so large that we had to have two men carry a cluster. Now, you ever, see, you ever go to the grocery store and pick up a cluster of grapes, and you go, wow, that's like, a, you know, got 150 grapes on it. You're like, oh, I got a whole cluster of grapes. No, it took two men in a pole to carry these grapes. Now, the reason I'm going to get to that in a second, the reason they were so large was a couple of the men go, whoo these grapes, we found, them, we found that land with milk and honey. It's spectacular. Oh, my gosh, it's the place to be. But be careful with that, in your, that word in your life. But guess what? There's some big old people over there, and we look like grasshoppers. Now, I did some research on the giants of that time. They could be anywhere from Goliath was a baby compared to these guys. They could be anywhere from 15, now listen, you can do your own research, to 36 feet tall. Now, when I was looking at this, and I was like, and, and, and I think it's Anakim, is that how it's pronounced? Uh, this was the land of the big boys. These were the ones that had this land. And so I cannot imagine being, they were, the average height over there is five foot six. You're a big man. You know, you're a giant. But five foot six over there. So here they are looking at men, let's just say 20 feet tall. <laughs> That's a big old guy. 20 feet tall. Now you got to remember when you look at some of the other, uh, uh, when you look at King Art, when you look at these guys, they talk about their breastplate being six feet wide. Me laying sideways and laying sick. I mean, that's a, that's a big old man. His shoulders had to be eight, ten foot wide. So you're looking at the man. Can't, it's just, it's just, we can't fathom that. So they're looking from a way far off, and they're looking at these people going, wow. So the grapes had to be like grapefruits. You know what I'm saying? They had to be huge for these giants because they're not going to hold a small grape, right? They're holding, there's the land. Well, we all know the story. The ten men go, oh, but we can't take it. I can't believe God brought us this far and he's going to let us die out here. Let's just stone Moses and Aaron. Now, let's go to the two great men that you didn't hear anything from until this moment. Joshua and Caleb says, you know what? No, 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 no. This is not going to happen. We can take this land. God brought us this far. So with the promise, with all the other things, I just, I don't know. There's been things in my life that have happened that have built the man that I am today. Whether it was good things or bad things, trials, tests, whatever it was, I've always tried to say, God, help me be a stronger person. Uh, I played football, Colin played football, and one thing I always taught when we got in the car, he would be upset. He'd go, Dad, we lost that game. Bubba. I said, did you give 100%? Did you give 100%? This is our walk with God now. I always use this, I always use this in Scripture to Colin. He, I said, did you give 100%? He said, Dad, quit asking me that. Yes, I did. I said, now do the same thing in your whole life. Everything you do, you give 100%. You cannot answer. I can't answer for Brother Jerry's walk. Now, I can be there to help him. But he's going to stand before God judgment one day and, and say, Jerry Eskew, this is your life. Well, hold on. Uh, let, me, let me speak for a minute. No, he's not going to let that happen. We've got to answer. So I use that as a method to say, you know what? Yes, you've had problems. And yes, you've had tests. But you get back up, you keep moving, and you give 100%. So here's Joshua and Caleb. They come before the people. They're talking about stoning Moses and Aaron. Moses is like, I'm just doing what God told me to do. I'm just a voice for God. And that's where we are, right? We are hands, feet, voice, eyes for God. And Moses, I'm just doing what God told me to do. And now you're talking about stoning me? After all the miracles we've been through, and here you are talking about killing me and Aaron. 
What do we, Joshua and Caleb got up and they were so upset, they tore their clothes and said, what are you talking about? What is wrong with you people? Don't you get where we are? That we're right here at the precipice of taking what God promised. Now, now, did God always say, oh, it's going to be a bed of roses. You just float around on clouds. Never. He never said that. I can go through, man, I asked Barb, we were here this morning, I was going on my phone. I said, Barb, I got about 160 scripture. She said, no. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I said, Lord, help me condense this down, Dr. Patterson. Where am I going with this? So they rent their clothes. They're like, what are you talking about? Don't you understand? It's right here. We, all we have to do is go take it. And now, you understand how many Israelites there were? Now, grant all those weren't, weren't an army of men. There were women and children involved. But it didn't matter if it was 10 or if it was 10,000. God would empower them. I mean, you talk about Samson killing th three with a jawbone? One man. What could he do with 10,000 or 20 or 30? It didn't matter. It didn't matter how big they were. Again, this is a trial and test t lesson here as well. How big is your trial in your life? Are you going to be a giant killer when your trials come your way? Are you going to say, you know what, God? You brought me this far. You didn't bring me this far just to say, here you go, and kick you off a cliff. God is there to say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I brought you this far. Now, buck up, pray up, read up, help someone else, and watch your problem get smaller. We all have problems. We all have trials. We all have tests. But, man, I've been through some things in my life. You know, I'm like, oh, my Lord, financially, emotionally, family, physically. What in God's name? But then I can just get on Facebook for two seconds and go, oh, man, I ain't got it so bad. My life is, I'm just easy peasy over here, brother. So someone has always got to work. Try to find the good in everything that you're going through. God, if you're putting me through this test right now, it's for a reason. But let me be thankful because you are my provider in everything. You brought me here for a reason. Why am I standing in the middle of this desert? And you promised me over there. We saw it with our own eyes. We didn't have binoculars, so it had to be pretty close. You saw, I saw it. We saw it as leaders. But then we go back and tell the congregation, nope, it ain't happening. They, they said these, these leaders started murmuring to the other people. Oh, you won't believe what they've done to us. They brought us here to die. Look what's going to happen. We're going to be a laughing stock to everybody around us. There's another lesson in that one too. I was like, Lord, don't worry about everybody else. You can't worry about what other people think about you, but you can strive to be the best you you can be. And if you will do that, and you said something, Brother Ashley, thank you. If you see me here, you're going to see the same mic out there. If I see you here, Brother Sean, and I shake your hand here, I'm going to shake it out there. I'm going to make sure you know that I know that you were there. How hard is it as us a congregation? I know you've always taught this, Dr. Patterson. Thank you. Love. Be friendly. Be kind, Brother Mike. I didn't know Brother Mike before he started hitting his beautiful wife. I didn't know before they started coming here. But I made it a point to make myself accessible. Right, Brother Mike? I come up and engaged him and talked to him and said, hey, we're glad to have you. It took me five minutes. We, we're glad you're here. And, it, and it's not because of me he keeps coming. But I'm saying to see a smiling face is nice to have. We as Christians are supposed to not get complacent and go, you know what? I'm, I'm in the desert. I'm okay. God still, he was still providing them manna. They, weren't, they didn't have rows of food. And the, still providing manna, still providing the water, still providing the food, the, the, the shade by day. You ever been outside? You may have been outside. We were at a little ball field yesterday with, with Logan playing ball. I was like, whoo, Barb, hallelujah. I mean, sweat was just rolling off my face. And I said, listen, they got a second game. Uh, I think it's time to go. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm melting out here. I need help. You know, my makeup's running or something. I don't know. But, but, but my, my point is that we have to. We have to make it a point to look at our lives and go, okay, am I going to be the same here that I'm going to be out there? If you will do that, people see consistency in your life, and they will, they will respect that. They'll love that. Well, let's go back to the Scripture. Now, here they were. Moses loved everybody, or he wouldn't have done what he did. Now, of course, he was apprehensive at first, but I'm just saying he did what he's supposed to do. And here are these children of Israel, just like ungrateful children, murmuring, talking about them. They were going to kill them. Joshua and Caleb said, no, stop. Now, let's go to the reward point of this point. God was angry. He said, let me tell you something, you ungrateful little child. Let me tell you something. You are spoiled. You're rotten. I've done everything for you. I have watched over you. I've delivered you 
from your captivity to give you the promised land. The land that I promise you that flows with milk and honey. Now, our promise is what? The end game of our promise is to make it to heaven. Our ultimate goal is to make it to heaven. That's our promise. That's our promised land that flows with milk and honey. That flow. Okay, so don't lose focus on that. Okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. So here they are. They said, God said, man, they have messed with me for the last time. I'm going to strike them all now with the plague. Everybody's going to die. Now, I'm just kind of not going through all. I'm not reading all these scriptures, Brother Ryan. I'm sorry. So I'm going to kill them all with the plagues. Moses said, Lord, here he is again now. Being the pastor, I guess you'd say, Lord, please don't smite them. And he was talking about himself too, but, but he was just a worker for God. He said, don't smite them. Don't kill them, Lord. Listen, we, you brought them this far, and for a testimony, don't kill them because everybody else is going to hear about this, and they're going to say, this is a God that brings his people out, and they won't know the full story because we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have Facebook back then. That They won't know the whole story, and you're going to look like a God that just brings his people out and kills them. Didn't know in the ungratefulness, didn't know in the problems they had, didn't know in that they were, God was like, I have been way patient with you, way patient. So here's what he says. We know the story. He says, let me tell you what. I'm going to let Joshua and Caleb. Now, I'm talking about the OGs. I'm not talking about the kids because we all know anybody under 20 years old got to go into the promised land. But I want to let Joshua and Caleb, the OGs, they're going through. They got the golden ticket. They made it, and they're going. Well, when you look at this scripture, you go, what did Joshua and Caleb do so great? All they said was, we can take it. But there's a scripture in there in Numbers that says this. God promised it to us. And it's for us to take, and he will not leave us alone. He will not leave you in your time of trial. He will not leave you in your time of, tr- of, of trouble. When, when you've been in, I don't know about you guys, I'm, most of you guys I know are perfect, and your lives are just perfect, and your bills are paid six months in advance. I know all this, but for me, it's not that way. So every day, I have to get up, and I go, I, well, excuse me, I get to get up, and I go, Lord, thank you, Jesus, I'm putting on my britches. And I'm getting, thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. Thank you for what you've done for my family and my friends and my brothers and my sisters and what you're going to do for them. Lord, bless him. It's not about Mike. I tell him thank you because he did wake me up and let me, have, let me help mine. But the first thing I want to thank him for is for everybody else. Because when you look at Joshua and Caleb, they didn't have, they were, they were mixed in. God said, I'm going to kill everybody at first. But then God comes back later in Numbers 13, he goes, or 14, he goes, but these two, they're going through. Now, Moses and Aaron, I can't imagine in their mind what they were thinking going, listen, I've done everything you asked me to do. What did Moses do that we know that God told him not to do? Okay. God is, God is our parent. Just look at him as a parent. When you're disobedient, when you have a child that's not listening, or you have, guess what? It is amazing as a, how frustrated we can get. Anybody a parent in here? Raise your hand if you are. Okay, a lot of parents in here. If you're a parent, you know how frustrating that is for you to tell that child, look, don't do it, little Timmy. And little Timmy goes, ah, Timmy, I told you not to do it. Well, it's the same thing with our walk with God. We know what to do and we know what not to do. I, my thing with life that I've had to struggle with is sometimes being a little impatient. I know none of y'all have that problem either. But I, sometimes I'm impatient. When it comes to business, I've had like four or five different businesses, and sometimes I'm like, Lord, what was I thinking? Did I, did I listen to you long enough? Did I pray about it long enough? But let me tell you something. I had a business one time I started. It was like a mailbox, et cetera, type store, UPS type store many years ago, 22 years ago. And, man, we got in there, and Barbara, what, we didn't know Barbara was pregnant at the time. She was going to help me at the business. I was working a full-time job. Well, she got sick. Whoo, she was sick. So now I, here I am working a full-time job during the day, working uh, another job in the evening. I wouldn't get home. I'd leave at 7 o'clock and get home at 10 or 11 at night. And I was like, uh, no, Lord, I need your help. We moved in about six months down the road. The business was paying for itself. But I said, Lord, you know what? I need deliverance. i got to have something. Barbara can't help me. It's not her fault, but I need help. Well, all of a sudden, this lady just walks by the store one day. I saw her walk past the glass. I was just sitting at the the cash register, not by myself, and I was like, I was praying. She stopped, turned around and come back in. She said, sir, you thinking about selling your business? And I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll get the papers to you, how much you want for it. I told her, I got exactly, should ask for more, but I got exactly what I asked for. And God provided. I wasn't trying to be greedy. I just wanted out of it. You know what I'm saying? So, but, but God will provide for you. There's times if you stay faithful. Do not, do not expect God, trust me, do not expect God to answer your prayers and to be there for you like the children of Israel if you're not willing to be thankful 
every day, in everything. I'm talking about your trials and your tests. I was, I was reading in Philippians 4 and 6, which talks about that. It talks about don't, don't be unthankful. I can't say it enough. When you talk about being a giant killer or a grasshopper, I, I've made up my mind years and years ago. I, had, I, grew up in, I grew up in South Georgia by myself. I didn't have any older or younger siblings. It was just me until Cindy came along, my sister. But she was, you know, ten and a half years younger than me. I didn't have a brother that could help me fight my battles. And I learned how to, to just take care of what I could take care of myself. But even at that, it wasn't enough. And I, I finally got to the point, I was being terrorized in school, man. Talking about bullying. It was bullying to the ninth degree. I was like, Lord, I mean, I was getting beat up every day. I was having five or six of them beat me up. I was running to the car, sweaty. I don't know if I've told you all this story. I'm running to the car, sweaty. I got dirt all over me. My mama goes, what's wrong with you? And I was trying to be tough. And I said, no, mama. We, I was just running to get to you. I was so excited. I was dirty, filthy, sweating. A couple times my lip was bleeding. And she was like, Michael, watch we when we did earlier the day, we played football and they, she knew how it was. I was just wide open, right? So, but I finally said, Lord, I, I, and I was just, what was I, 10 or 11 years old? I said, Lord, I've had enough. I can't live like this. This is horrible. You know, a lot of a lot of children this day and time try to go to the suicide thing because it's so it's so pr- predominant to them on social media and things. I never thought about that. My mother told me you're going straight to hell, so that was enough for me. I said I am not going to that place. So I made up my mind. Then I said, Lord, help me, help me through this. But you know what? It, I, 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 that night I went to bed and I dreamt about a young lady that was in in that school that was struggling and she was had a, a health issue and she kind of limped and was not in good health and. I made it a point to go to her, and uh, she was a different color than I was. I, it wasn't, and, and I said, had nothing to do with race. Had nothing to do with her as an It was the fact that I knew that she was struggling. And I asked her, I said, can I carry your books to every, we were kind of in the same classes, but I, can I carry your books to every class? She said, what? She was on crutches, or those things like, you know, she had MS, where you walk with a little thing going on your arms here, and and I told her, I said, can I, or I asked her, can I carry your books? And she said, what? I guess it shocked her. And I said, yeah, I would like to carry your books. I, I noticed you struggling. Nobody was willing to help her. And, and she goes, well, if you would. So I started carrying her books. Nobody bothered me from that point on. But I was willing to do something that was not in my comfort zone. I didn't know her. I'd never even talked to this young lady. But the point is, God sees you where you are. He knows where your heart is. The one thing I want to get a point to you is this. Do not let your circumstance make you a grasshopper. These Israelites we're looking at, we are grasshoppers, Dr. Patterson. We're not going anywhere. We're not ever going to make it. We're going to die in the desert. We're going to go back to, we're going to elect another leader. We're going back to Egypt. I don't know how they're going to get across the Red Sea, but they were going to go back to Egypt. They didn't think that far. How many of us have been impetuous and made wrong decisions, right, without thinking it completely through? So they, they said, we're going to get another leader, and we're going. Well, here he is. He says, all right, I'm going to be merciful. I'm letting Joshua and Caleb go, anybody under 20, but the rest of you are going to wander for 40 years in the desert until every one of you are dead, every one of you. And he said, what could Moses say? He knew he had been disobedient. He knew he had not done what he should do. And he was like, okay, Lord. Joshua and Caleb were the giant killers. They made up in their mind, even though it looked impossible. How many of us have had situations, rhetorical questions, you don't have to raise your hand, have had impossible situations in our lives, at least we thought they were. But we forgot. We got the man. We got the man. We got the hotline. All we have to do is say, Lord, I need you. He's sitting on hold. He's sitting there going, dun, dun. he hears that music like Jeopardy music. Dun, 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 dun. Well, Mike hadn't called me today, huh? And whether it's a thanking or whether it's praying for someone else or praying for myself, he's, he's on hold waiting on you. Don't be like the Israelites and go, you know what? I'm going to be that little grasshopper that's going to jump along and, uh, and just live my life on the ground. You know what I'm saying? The neat thing about an eagle, an eagle doesn't eat dead meat. An eagle soars. Everything he does has to be living. He scoops down and catches that fish in the water. He'll scoop down and catch a rabbit. Everything's living. Eagles. It says he will give us wings like eagles so that we can soar above our problems, but we can't be that grasshopper because I got news for you. There's some grasshoppers in my house that can fly around and they freak me out. I was cutting the grass the other day about a week ago. One flies on the side of my head. I'm like, what in the world? I said, who gave grasshopper wings? This is insanity. But you don't see them soaring up in the sky like that. You don't see them soaring a thousand feet. 
You know, you know what the biggest enemy of an eagle is? It's a crow. And you go, a crow, that black bird? Yeah, a crow. They'll pester that eagle and torment that eagle. But you know what the eagle does? He just says, you know what? I'm tired of you, devil. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spread my eight-foot wingspan, woo, and I'm going to soar so high because I can do it, you can't. He soars so high, that crow goes, well, if I'm going back to the house. I can't hang with the big boy. So what happens with us is God said he would give us wings like eagles. So if you are going through a trial, if you're going through a test, have the Joshua mentality, the Caleb mentality. That's a, it's a giant in front of you, sure. But you got the giant killer on your side. God will give you the energy. He'll give you the know-how. He'll give you the power to make it into your promised land. And if you will keep your eyes focused on the prize, right? Stay, Lord, here's Philippians 4 says, I'm, I'm pressing toward the mark, always toward that mark. You cannot get so lackadaisical in your life with God, you forget to pray. Who forgets to pray? I don't know. I mean, if I'm breathing, I'm always thinking, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't pray enough today. Lord, I didn't quite do exactly. I didn't call enough people today and say, how are you? I know someone's sick. Lord, did I, did I call them today? If I'm sick, nobody call, nobody call me. How many people have you called? How many people have you been a Joshua or a Caleb to and said, let me rent my clothes for you? Because Joshua and Caleb didn't do it for just themselves. They were doing it for the whole million people plus that were standing behind them. They go, we're not just doing this for Moses and Aaron. We don't want them to die here, but... You're talking about killing everybody and going back. That's just insanity. So I sang a song years ago, I won't turn back. We've gone too far. You've gone too far in your race to go, well, you know, I've come this far. I don't care if it's one step for some of the newer newer people. If it's one step, don't go back. There's songs years ago that said, take one step forward, two steps back. No, no, you should always be moving forward. In football, go there again. We never taught the boys to retreat. If you're on defense, you always move forward. You're trying to find the ball. The ball. That's your prize is the ball. Defense is the ball. So your prize is heaven. It's not difficult. God knows where you are. He knows your voice. You're his child. I've been in a crowd of people, and I hear, Dad, where's, where's my son? Where's my daughter? I hear it immediately, and I know. We know our children's voices, right? He knows your voice. Don't think that he does it. There's been times and trials I've gone through, and I'm like, man, it's just hitting the ceiling, Dr. Patterson. It's not going anywhere. But then I looked for a second. I stood back, and I went, I am asking him for myself most of the time. That's not it. The wisest man in the world, God said, I'll give you anything your heart desires. What do you desire? Riches, wealth, power. He said, I just want the, the, the wisdom to rule your people. God said, whoo hoo now, that touches my heart right there now because you're willing to touch the people that, that serve under you. And that's what God's looking for, a servant's heart, being a giant killer. you got the man on your side. Don't, don't want, listen, I remember Colin one time, and I'll hush after this. We were in a particular situation, and these two or three boys were picking on Colin. And I didn't know what he meant by this, but I picked it up really quick because I, again, went through what I went through. I was walking one time, Colin, whoo, right up on my side. And I was like, what, what are you doing over here when there's a group of 20 guys over there? And just a few minutes, he, I saw these other two boys out of the corner of my eye running over there toward Colin. And I realized what he was doing. He was their daddy. Daddy wasn't going to let anybody hurt him. I'd go down first before Colin went down. And I said, nope, that ain't happening. And it happened. And that's the way God thinks about you. He was going to stand in the gap. He's going to be your bridge. When you're walking in the sand, you've seen this, right, the footprints. You're walking in the sand, they go, well, God, why'd you leave me? He said, I didn't leave you. I was carrying you. So keep your hearts and your minds right with God. Be thankful. you got a provider that loves you. Caleb and Joshua didn't do what they did, thinking when all these people were turned against them that they would ever go to the promised land. Never thought that. But then all of a sudden, when God told Moses, he said, but these two men, they're going. So please make up in your mind, in your heart, that you're going. And when you're going, remember, reach back. Take somebody with you. It's not just about you, Sister Kim, and I know that because you got a servant's heart. Not just that, not about just about me or you or you. It's about all of us. Who can we help? Who can we? Okay, you need help up off that step. I remember Brother Patterson here, not right before he had his heart attack. 
was, man, he was getting into it one Wednesday night. He was just, Brother Ashley and Brother Michael, he was just preaching away. Brother Passion took off running and leaped up on this. He didn't go to the step. He leaped up. Ashley and Brother Michael could have been, two, there were two steps behind him, and he never knew it. He never knew it. If he would have fallen backwards or fallen down, they would have been there to catch him. That's your God. He is there for you. He loves you. He's, he's going to lead you and guide you, but you have to trust in him. Don't let this world get you thinking in your mind, I'm a grasshopper. I have nowhere to go. I'm going to be destroyed by my situation, and I, I will not go any farther than this. I'm going to die right here. No. No, God's got you. You're going to go through sickness, Brother Sean. You're going to go through heartache, Brother Sean. You're going to go through things in your life. But Brother Sean's sitting right there. He could have got married. Sister and Sister Gone said, no, you know what? You tried to kill me in church. But you know what? The Lord giveth. The Lord taketh away. But that through his trial and test, you know how many people he's, he's had a chance to reach out to? Thousands upon, more than I'll ever reach out to. Thousands upon thousands of people because of your infirmity. But God turned it around. Brother Sean's sitting right there looking all dapper today in his three-piece suit. And that's a blessing. It's an honor to know that I serve with people that love God. And I'll hush now. But listen, remember, be a giant killer. God loves you, and I thank you very much for your time. Praise the Lord. I love you. Praise the Lord. Can we stand together? What a wonderful, wonderful Wonderful, challenging Bible lesson. Can you say amen? It kind of wound my clock, I'm telling you. Got me excited. And uh, I thought of this as Brother Mike was teaching, and it just kind of came to me. The difference between a grasshopper and a giant killer is that a grasshopper focuses on the size of the enemy, and the giant killer focuses on the size of his God. And that makes a major difference. I want to say how big God is. And how small the enemy is compared, not to me, but compared to God. Wow. What a challenging man. Let's thank the Lord together for it, shall we? Lord, we're so thankful today for what you've given your messenger to give to us today. We are lifted up. We are encouraged. We are challenged. We are moving ahead because we have confidence in you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone all together said amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed for just a few minutes. You can shake hands if you feel comfortable. Wave if you don't. We love you. See you in a little bit.